Parks and Recreation Committee. I am here with uh, members of the committee, uh, Councilor Joe Driscoll, Councilor Rita Paniagua. Uh, I, I, Councilor Allen is is on this uh, on the uh, Zoom meeting too. So uh, I have Commissioner here. Commissioner, you why don't you? Uh, we have a, quite a few items on the agenda, and uh, why don't I'm going to turn it over to you to talk a little bit about what we you're asking the council to do here. So sure. it's up to you, Councilor. Thank you very much. I gave you guys quite a number of weeks off, you know, as a break. So I'm coming back full force right now. So um, I'm going to start with the easy ones. Um, the first one is we want to accept a donation from John Marcellus. He did this about two years ago. He reached out to us and wants to provide a donation for $3,000 for us to, to purchase ice skates to be used at any of our ice skating facilities for any age. So that um, we would like to happily accept that donation. Okay. And that's um, that is for our. Uh, so what what what's the deal? He's going to like uh, for three thousand dollars. We uh, until we hit that limit, and kids can rent ice skates. In other words, right? Correct. He, we so wear and tear on our skates is enormous every year um, because you can imagine how many people in a normal year come to pay, to come sure. to Clinton Square and other rinks. So he gives us three thousand three thousand dollars for us to purchase new ones that will be rented out. Okay, terrific. Thanks for explaining that. That's terrific. Okay. Uh, any questions? Any questions for my uh, fellow counselors, my colleagues? Hearing hearing no questions, I'll ask for a vote to uh, move this forward. Just give me a thumbs up, Rita or Joe. Okay, and Councilor Allen, you want to pipe in? You okay with this? Yes, I'm okay. Thank you. Okay, so we'll move on to the next one, there, Commissioner. Okay, the next one is many years in the works, but we're finally really close to the end here. We applied for a grant for the from the Jim and Julie Beheim Foundation to restore and renovate the basketball courts at Westmoreland. They recently reached out and approved the grant for $35,000. So this is just requesting approval to accept those funds so that we can hopefully do that construction ASAP. This is terrific. And I know uh, Council Driscoll, you've been championing this for quite some time since you started your council. You want to say anything there, Council Driscoll? God bless Jimmy Beheim. Yes, this is a great addition. That's a no, great. No, I'm, I'm, I'm very Council. happy, Councillor Hogan. You're, you're absolutely right. We've, we've, uh, and I want to thank uh, Commissioner Lafave and all her team for all the work they did. This was definitely a very uh, many hands make for light work, and I'm very excited because we've already done a lot of work on Westmoreland Park, and uh, this is going to be some icing on the cake to match the community center and uh, really. Uh, help those courts we're going to get new fencing and new resurfacing so i'm really looking forward to the renovations and improving uh things for our our teens over there in that corridor so thanks for everyone i hope uh council will support it thanks everyone i i certainly have to commend both of you because that park uh has really improved it's amazing park it's become an amazing park before because of the efforts of the parks department under your leadership commissioner and Certainly, your leadership, uh, Councillor. So it's terrific. So, um, are we okay with that, uh, Councillor Peniagua? Yes. Yes, we are. Councillor Allen. I'm good with it. Move yeah. that forward. Absolutely. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Next, Commissioner. Okay. We're now we're moving away from the money coming into us. So, um, this is a budgeted item. Um, myself and Chris Wiles, President of the Syracuse Parks Conservancy, requesting their allocation. Um, to be paid out of $9,000. Parks Conservancy's sole purpose for existing is to support the Parks Department, which they absolutely, absolutely have in a big way in the last 12 months. Nobody can de deny that. Um, so they have outlined how they have spent the $9,000. They, in many ways, assisted us during a rough time. Part of the money was spent. Um, they provided, they purchased equipment for us last year when we were in a really rough spot. So. Um, I really feel very strongly about this. Again, this is a budgeted item. We do this every year. So this is just the formal request from both, really from them with my support. Okay. So uh, so they put the money forward and now we're, are, are we reimbursing them? Commissioner, I'm sorry, you told me about this it's last the, night. It's but... the same way. I mean, I can't speak for other departments, but you know, in the past we had funding for Boys and Girls Club to support them for teen programming. 
this is we're supporting them because you know while while they're asking for nine thousand dollars they certainly provided us with last year with a hundred thousand dollars to, okay. to open the pool so to me it's a really oh i see it, it seems pretty fair and they also just fundraised twenty seven thousand dollars for us for the dog park so this is um they are provi they're creating a website that you can search by amenity on their websites meaning if you want to look for any park that has a shelter in it you can go there so they're really helping they're collaborating with us they're exist they're coexisting with us for earth day coming up they purchased tongs so any of these groups reaching out to us to clean up the parks they've purchased tongs um again they essentially sponsored our summer programs programs last year so um this is just part of the arrangement that we we provide some financial support for all they do for us okay now i get it so in other words they're, an, they're obviously an entity that that's aligned with us and we're just paying them back for their efforts in the past to help us out through the pandemic correct yes this has been an annual budgeted item for as long as i've been here and i believe okay. it i believe it predates me by quite a bit okay okay uh, why, why wouldn't we, Commissioner, why wouldn't we just do this? Is it because we had such a shortfall last year? Is that the idea? Why wouldn't we do which one? I'm sorry. Those are all these items, event program insurance, website upkeep development, all the event, parks and recreation. The event program insurance is so that they purchase insurance for events that they run, basically their own fundraisers. So we can't purchase that for them. Okay. Um, or we can't pay for it. The website, that's something, I mean, that's, they're doing it. Um, last year, the summer programs, I mean, that's when we were going into a contingency budget, so they, but we couldn't let the kids suffer. So that's why they came in really quickly and, and purchased the supplies for us to serve 800 kids last summer. Okay. Okay. Um, any questions for my colleagues on this? No, I'm, it's, I'm really good with this. Yeah. Okay. Councilor Driscoll. I'm, I'm good. Councilor Allen. Okay. We'll move that forward. Next commissioner. Um, okay, so I have three separate IMAs with the county. Um, I can do them individually. The first one is, if you have looked at the budget yet, we're looking to purchase boats to rent out, you know, starting in Hiawatha Lake, eventually moving to Inner Harbor, maybe the creek. Um, because of the pandemic, I don't know if you've paid attention, just anything outdoor gear-wise, there's a six-month back order log on anything you want to get right now. The county is not renting out their boats this summer, so they have graciously offered their boats to us to get us this program started. So this is just an agreement for us to essentially borrow their boats and associated gear for this summer, and then there's no there's no money exchange, and we'll get the boats back to them as soon as we order our own. Okay. What, so what are we going to do with the boats? Rent them out, or what are yes. we going to do with them? Okay. And that okay. we will discuss this again with them. We're just rent, we're like leasing them, so to speak. We're just, them. we're borrowing them right now, but the plan is for the city to purchase boats. But we're, we're going to lease them to folks now. Uh, we're okay with this liability wise and all that stuff. Uh, that's why, so that's what I'm requesting permission for, that there be an actual agreement that addresses all of that. So Corp Council will get involved in reviewing this agreement. Okay, we'll we'll accept the liability for all that and all that. So, okay. Um, any questions for my colleagues? No. 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 No questions. Are we okay to move this forward, or Councilor Driscoll, Councilor Paniagua, Councilor yeah. Allen? Yeah. So, so wait, hold on, Julie. Just to begin. So, when are we supposed to start the the boat thing? So we. We'll we'll get details about this, but we internally right now plan to launch this new program um, around Memorial Day. Okay. Wow. So how big how big are these? I I don't remember ever seeing these boats. So um, we've never had them in the city, Councilor. These are sit on top kayaks. Oh, so we're gonna have the PFDs, which is the life jackets, with them. Um, we're going to have our lifeguards be involved in this program for safety reasons. Obviously, we're going to talk with Corp Council to get the proper waivers and whatnot for any users. Um, but we're really excited. This is just another offering that, you know, people need recreation activities right now. And mm -hmm. we're excited to, to, to launch this. So what are the age intended? <laughs> what's the age limits to use this? this? So I don't have that right now. But so we're, we're already talking with Corp Council about, you know, U.S. Coast Guard approved life jackets. Um, the ages, but so certainly a single kayak, there will be an age limit. Mm -hmm. We haven't worked out those details yet. I can certainly forward those contracts or the waiver agreements to council to approve before we launch this program, if you'd like. 
That'd be now, great. Uh, where, where will he literally launch these boats? Inner Harbor or? So we're gonna start. We're gonna start at Higher Onondaga because we have space in the boat, the boathouse to store them. Oh, yeah. We have a very large room, and if you go there right now, just where the bridge is, the pavilion, there's already sort of a natural launch area. So that's where it, that's where it will be. Okay, so you're gonna be right. Oh, in that enclosed area on Hiawatha Lake. Yes. Okay. And we okay. have lifeguards that will already be working at the pool, so we'll have safety managed. A, um, Councilor Capanis, that is going to be addressed later today in the same meeting. <laughs> what, what we meeting? Is, is that a parks meeting or what? No, meeting? no, we said about the fee structure, meeting. and that's that's. I'm getting to that in the next few letters here. Okay, that's at three o'clock. So, so the no. city's going to have the city's Soon. going to have its own like little navy, basically. I sort of like that. It makes <laughs> me sort of like an admiral. Um, yeah. <laughs> Joe. Okay, so we're all we're all set, uh, colleagues, uh, to push this forward. Any other questions? We One are? more question. So, so okay. did, do, you, do you have you any idea how much will you be renting this for? So that if you we can go to I can skip to that right now if you want, but we were going to cover that in this thirty minute session. Oh, okay. okay. Go. So I'll you get, I promise we'll get to it in the next fifteen minutes. We'll get to it. No, no worries. No worries. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Trying to make it simple for you. So, okay. So, I, anything about the agreement with the county? No. Is there okay. anything in the agreement about the county? No. Is there anything? Uh, okay. Now, which? What do you want to do now, uh, Commissioner? You want to go? The okay. Fees? So I just there's I can skip to the fees if you want, just for to keep it simple. Yeah. So, let's do that. Um, I have an item, and I want to be really, really clear that. This is a legislation item not to raise fees, but to introduce new fees, fees that never existed. Um, so one of them on here, you can see the sporting equipment rentals for pop-up recreation events. That is where we, we want to introduce a fee to rent these kayaks out. So it's $5 per session. You cannot go anywhere in the United States and rent a kayak for $5 a session. We're not saying $5 an hour, but so this is where we're introducing that we'd like to create that that fee. I do have other ones on here, but that's specifically the boat one. Okay. So you want We also want to just call this a sporting equipment rental fee. I don't want to limit this to boats um, because we had a lot of success this last winter with pop-up events with our snowshoes. So we want to we, we think that $5 no matter what the sporting equipment is is extremely reasonable. So I want to just create a fee called sporting equipment rentals for pop-up events. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then, uh, you know, a lot of this is placeholder fees, basically, correct? To make sure people show up, basically. Well, this one, this one is not. I mean, I can't. I don't. I mean, I certainly can if the council wanted me to. But do you really want us renting out boats for free? No, no, I'm not talking. So I don't about call. That. So in my mind, it's not a placeholder. About... It's. I mean, no. it's it's five dollars for us giving you a value of something that's near a thousand dollars. I'm sorry to make this is for clear. unlimited I mean, time. So we, make we'll my... call it per session. <laughs> right now, we're thinking a session would be about an hour, but it, it certainly it would depend on which sporting equipment it is. But honestly, I don't know that anybody would want to kayak on Hiawatha Lake for more than an hour. You're just going to go in circles sorry. and circles and circles. Okay, I, I didn't make myself clear. I was going literally. I was starting with the special events programs for you, the three dollars oh, okay. per person. One dollars per person. I, I that's to me is sort of like a placeholder thing because you have a limited amount of space and you want to make sure so, people show up. Correct. Right. So actually, if I can introduce that one by going to the bottom of that same piece of of legislation, that we are purchasing ten thousand dollars worth of a movie screen, an inflatable twenty foot inflatable movie screen that eventually we can have a crowd size of a thousand that can see it with a projector. This is for special events that we are going to hold. Um, you know, we want to do movie events right now. So the first one, we we also anticipate that our partners in the community will very much want to rent these. They come to us every year and want to rent this. So first is we want to have a fee set for groups to rent this movie screen operated by us to be used only in the parks, $150 to rent the screen, $40 an hour for the staffing time for us to operate it. For a comparison, if Let's just say um, GSNA, um, Kirk Park neighbors, any of them wanted to do this themselves and get a park permit for us. If they went to a private business and rented the movie screen, they would pay a thousand dollars. 
Mm -hmm. So like, while I'm introducing a new fee, we're doing so at a highly reduced rate for these groups to also provide more activities in our parks. This include the, the park permit? Um, yeah, so we would, we yes, because you would be renting it um, in the park to be used by us. So it's the $150 for the movie screen, the $40 per hour. And then the only parameter is if they wanted to show a movie, they on them, their own would have to get the movie license to keep it legal. But that's not through the city. Okay. Uh, where would, where would we steal or store the screen, Commissioner? So, so I've purchased this screen at a, at a previous municipality. It stores in um, as big as my desk, probably in a bag. Okay. In so a bag. it doesn't take a lot of space. So it's durable and hardy and all that. And then they, what do they? The what screen's they machine washable. I mean, it's yeah, it, it's 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 high quality. What about the projection equipment? Is that part of that this? would come with it? That's part of the package deal. Okay. So that's why you're paying. So the 150 is the screen rental. The $40 hour staffing is for us to come in and um, you use um, use the the projector and the sound equipment for you so that we can project your, the, the movie. I mean, you could even do like a March Madness if a group wanted to do that, you know, stream a live event. Mm -hmm. Okay. And again, this, this be... is, oh, God. No, go on. No, this is okay. This so, so, Lee, so that I wanted to introduce what we're doing with the movie screen. So now you get into your special event fee. So this summer, we obviously want to get back to a more normal sense of society and offer programming, right? But for us internally to put on, use this movie screen and to pick any park, which we plan to pick multiple parks in the city, show a movie. The city has to pay for a license. You have to pay for the licensed work of somebody else. So we have to pay four hundred dollars to show a movie, right? We also right now are limited to two hundred people at a time if we just this is where you want to say placeholder if we pre-register 200 people to watch a movie and there's no cost and people think it's going to be it's 70 degrees but they like 80 degrees and they don't come i don't want the city to pay 500 dollars for this license for me to put staff on overtime and nobody show up so for this time being and i put i made it very clearly in here once we get out of this time period where we don't have to have capacity and we don't have to worry about mass gathering this permit fee or this fee will never be used again. This is right now though, while we have to pre-register so that we can keep it in a safe um, area of 200 people or whatever the mandates are this summer. If mandates go up to 500 people, we wanna use this fee. But again, if the state comes back and says, you know, herd immunity is here, we don't have to worry about it anymore. We won't use this fee ever again. We'll just let people show up and use and watch the movie with us. Okay. So that's the special event program fee? Yes, to be used okay. only so that we can actually guarantee attendance for an event when we're limited on capacity. Okay, good. Good, okay. Any other questions on this? This is very interesting, the screen rental. This is very cool, yeah. We're very, well, honestly, we're really excited about it um, because we plan to, I think, show about four movies this summer, but we already have groups reaching out who want to reserve just because they kind of heard that we're getting it because we've been talking about it. This can create a lot of cool events across the city. Um, again, we might be able to use this screen for like the tree lighting in the future. Even when we can gather, we can show things. I mean, there's a lot of potential here. Mm -hmm. Julie, when you say when you say it costs us 400, are you talking about um, is that like a licensing per film? Is that what you mean? So in order to show, I don't know, Raiders of the Lost Ark or something, you have to pay $400 to show it in a public setting. Is that what that is? That's exactly what it is. It's exactly what it is. Yeah, copyright. So, I always um, wondered what that was. It's four hundred dollars. I'm good to know. Well, it depends on the movie. If we pick a really old movie versus like a brand new, I mean, I'm like Moana or something, something newer. The price will vary, but four hundred is a, a good estimate, give or take. Is it the same fee? Oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. Go no, ahead. I was just gonna say you could do it. It's a Wonderful Life or a Christmas Story for free. Those are all the copyrights done on those. So. Okay. No. I was just going to ask, is it the same fee for the movies and streaming private events or something live or whatever other, you know? So, it's, it's, so Council Driscoll can probably speak to this pretty because it's similar to the music world. Anytime you're going to play something that was created by somebody else, you're supposed to pay for, you know, the rights to use that. So whether it's private screening in a group or public screening, you're supposed to pay for the license. Do people? Probably not. But we, the city will follow rules. We will follow the law. Yeah. In the same way, if you have a, if you have anything beyond just your family, you're supposed to, like Julie says, you're supposed to have it. But 
if you're doing it for an after school program, is someone really going to bust you and, you know, give you a ticket or not getting your license? Probably not. So most people don't apply for it. But if you are trying to do something like on the city level where you'd be trying to get, you know, 50 to 100 people together, you, you'd most definitely need it because they would find you and they would find out about it. So mm -hmm. it's one of those things like Julie said, you're supposed to be paying for it all the time. Not everybody does. It's, it's a gray area where you cross that line, mm -hmm. uh, where you risk getting into trouble. But if we were to do it as a municipality, we'd obviously most definitely need to. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. So do anybody have any more questions on the, those fees? Okay. No, I don't. Uh, can, counselors, any questions? Mm -mm, I'm good. Okay thank to, you. Are we okay to advance this to the full council? Okay. Oh, I, we, I, do have, I do have one question, um, Julie. Okay, Councilor maybe, Allen. Maybe I missed this part, but um, if so, if someone or an organization wanted to rent it, you can only rent it in the uh, city parks. So that's, we do want to limit it so that, because we don't want to open ourselves up to it just going everywhere, anywhere and everywhere. We want it to right. be a benefit to be used in a city. We actually, I think, did I put city park or city facility? City property I put. So therefore, if, if somebody wanted in the winter to do it inside a building, a city building. But until we get a handle on this, um, I would like to have it be a benefit to be used in our parks. Okay. And I'll rely on the parks and recreation staff, the outstanding staff you have um, to obviously, we're going to have to be careful about the content, obviously, of what's going to be shown. Correct? Absolutely. Because we'll have our staff there and all that. So, well, we would require them to show us proof that they got a license. And in doing so, they'd have to show us which movie they paid for a license for. Mm -hmm. okay. Perhaps you can, perhaps you can vet it, Pastor Hogan. Yes, Pastor Hogan. Yes, that was, I've been anointed as a pastor. Um, okay, uh, okay, any other questions? So, hearing none, I'll ask if the, my colleagues want to move this forward. Everybody okay? Yes. Okay. So, we'll move that forward. And, and is that it? Uh, no, I'm not, you're not getting away that easy. Okay, I have three more items. Um, next two, uh, two more uh, in it. Intermunicipal agreements with the county. One is just for us to officially sign the paperwork to request the reimbursement now that our deer management program has concluded for the season. So um, we are wrapping up the final bills from USDA. Um, it should be less than 20,000, which they agreed to pay that amount. So this is just requesting um, signature on that agreement so I can request the reimbursement. Any questions? How much is that? Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. It, it Go will on. be less than the the program. The wild the deer management program this year costs less than twenty thousand. So we're still getting the final bills, but it's fully. It should be one hundred percent reimbursable by the county with this agreement. Okay. okay. Any questions to this, Joe? Councilor Hogan. Yeah. Right in. Councilor. Oh, sorry. Go ahead, Councilor. Uh, go ahead, Auditor. Commissioner, um, just so you know, uh, and I apologize, I didn't send you a copy, but I sent it to Greg. Um, I did write the county legislature based on the ARP funding that's received to ask if the um, total deer and ticks management would be uh, um, back to the budget that we originally had. So I wrote to them uh, asking that uh, earlier this week. Thank you for that support. You're welcome. And I'll copy Council Driscoll as well on that. Yeah, I guess. Um... And thank you, uh, Councilor Maroon, for all your work on this and continuing to advocate. What, Julie? I guess my questions would be: um, Do you know when we'll get? Can we? Should we call a committee meeting to see how this second year went and, and, and get a wrap up and all that stuff? When we have the info on how the second year went, and I would also be curious to uh, Councilor Maroon's, uh, well, Auditor Maroon's point. Sorry, slip of the tongue. Um, continually, you know, it, we got the impression that. Um, the funding was initially that that it was not a stable thing we could rely on. It seemed it seemed like they were the county was was trying to uh, I don't know trying to pass the buck on uh, continuing to fund this program. So I just wanted to know to Councilor Maroon's point as well what what the program is going forward if we have commitment from them. Uh, as we did initially in the first year to support this for a, a recurring as a recurring thing annually. 
I can speak to the first part of your question about the success or lack of success, whatever you want to say. So we are getting official results from them within the next two weeks or so. So we'll put together that report and certainly get that out. The only thing to just keep in mind is the last year we did the management program for four months. This year we did it for maybe six or seven weeks. So the results are not yep. going to be apples to apples. Just keep that in mind. Yep, yep. I mentioned this to... I mentioned this to Councillor Driscoll. There, uh, we probably. Uh, I'd love to see the report. Um, I think you, you've all of you have done great work as far as establishing a template for this. Uh, there's been interest evidence from different municipalities outside the city who are experiencing the same problems we did. So, you know, we might want to share some of that information with some of them down the road too. Because they might have to in, inaugurate a program like this, and I guess the county's got more money for this. So, um, okay. I do have two more quick items, really quick. Just, and I know we have five minutes left because I don't know if there's one after this, another standing committee meeting. Um, okay, talk real fast. Okay, real quick. One more IMA. This is a formality because I assume everybody wants there to be elections held this year. We just have to sign an agreement with um, County Board of Elections for them to use Magna Rally and Seals Community Center for election activities. Unlike the state of Georgia, I'm for it. Okay. All, I think we're all for that. Okay. We, and I, yes. You like it. Okay. The last <laughs> one I have is this one is amending a fee, but this is decreasing a fee. So um, previously, council a few months ago approved fees for Meacham Ice Rental. $150 an hour for residents, 200 for resident groups, $200 an hour for non-resident groups. In the summer months, demand is not quite high, so we are requesting a decrease for the months shown here. So August, April and August, um, $100 an hour down to $50 an hour, and then May to July, which are the hardest months to rent because obviously it's very hot. Hockey teams aren't active, down at $85 an hour. So I am requesting a decrease um, to help out the people who want to get into our facility. That is an excellent idea. Are we all in favor of that? Yeah, I think that's fair. Sounds good. Any, any yep. questions? Okay. Those okay. are all my items. Okay. Well, if there is no more questions of the commissioner. I might, I might, I just might suggest when we, uh, when we open up the Magnarelli and the Seal Center to provide bottled water there as well. <laughs> good one, Kate. Good one, Counselor. We will do thank that. you so much for your work there, Commissioner. And thank, uh, you. thank you, my colleagues and all the city personnel on this. And I will adjourn this. Thank you. Meeting. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Appreciate it.